Okay, uh, let's start the uh, today's lecture. Uh, today's lecture is the uh, hidden Markov model, uh, part two. Uh, we, uh, last time we started to touch the formulation part of the hidden Markov model, and we will uh, go for more uh, uh, in the algorithm part of the hidden Markov model. And before moving to the technical discussion, I will have several uh, the uh, several uh, remarks in general for this uh, lecture. First, um, the uh, first part, the constant project. I think one of the PAs already sent a message, but anyway, uh, please start to uh, form uh, a team, make a team. Uh, we did not check the uh, set the deadline of the team forming yet. But we just wanted to ask you guys to report the current situation, whether you guys starting some team forming and so on. And then after that, we will check the status, we will do some more actions. But uh, uh, generally, uh, the instructors will not be involved in the, uh, the team forming process. So please uh, try to find the uh, team uh, the by yourself uh, with your kind of uh, uh, the, the, the with a charge, but we will try to kind of help uh, your kind of team on uh, the forming process uh, the in general. Okay. And the second uh, uh, remark uh, is the coding assignment too. Coding assignment two, right? Yeah. So uh, compared with coding assignment one, uh, this one, uh, the hidden Markov model is a very difficult assignment, uh, I would say. And the, uh, especially the several uh, the implementation tips are very important. So today, uh, the uh, rest of the uh, lecture, we will also review the uh, tips uh, again. So uh, please make sure to understand it. And before asking the question, you can definitely check the, these tips uh, so that your kind of uh, problems are uh, more like a typical ones or <laughs> a difficult one so that we can help. Okay, uh, let's uh, the start the today's uh, technical part of the discussions, uh, today's agenda. Uh, we will continue to discuss about the hidden Markov models. And the first we debuted the, uh, the previous lecture and the moving to the forward backward algorithm. And finally, we will also uh, the introduce the firmware algorithms. So as I uh, always starting from uh, the, uh, this uh, lecture with this uh, diagram, now we are in the, uh, the acoustic model uh, in hidden Markov model. And then we try to formulate this hidden Markov model uh, based on the uh, EM algorithm. So to do that, we actually introduce the four steps. First, uh, introduce the latent variable. Second, uh, the design a complete data likelihood. Third, uh, the, we also formulate the auxiliary function. And the fourth, uh, we uh, the derive the parameter estimation. Very quickly uh, review what we have done uh, before. First, we introduce a latent variable uh, by using the sequence. Alignment information as a, a latent variable, right? And then uh, based on this kind of alignment information as a latent variable, we also define the complete data likelihood. So we can somehow compute the joint distribution of the observation and the, uh, the uh, latent variable uh, if we know this kind of parameter. But note that this is a diagonal covariance, single Gaussian diagonal covariance cases. And the, uh, the, in your um, assignment, uh, coding assignment, you guys will also work on the uh, uh, mixture of diagonal covariance. So please uh, note about it. And the, I mentioned about this one can be computed if we know the uh, state sequence. But in general, uh, I still don't explain about you how to compute this one, how to compute a likelihood since uh, this one, including the summation over the sequence. So this is in general, uh, the intractable. 
So we need some kind of algorithm uh, to add up, add up, to compute this value. And today we actually touching how to solve, uh, how to compute this uh, likelihood value. The third one is auxiliary function. Uh, in the EM algorithm, instead of di directly computing the likelihood, we use this other uh, auxiliary function. And we actually decompose it the three uh, the, the function. Uh, one is related to the initial weight. The other is related to the transition weight. And the last one is related to the Gaussian distribution. However, we actually didn't fully solve this uh, the equations. We actually uh, the leave this gamma z, these uh, latent variables are, are still uh, the, the, the not undefined, uh, not defined. And this one actually can be solved by the forward backward algorithm. So this is actually today's main lecture. And this uh, the gamma uh, z uh, variables actually also appeared in the, uh, the solution of the parameter estimation. And this is actually one of the homework. Uh, you guys need to kind of uh, derive these equations. But this equation itself uh, cannot be computed if we don't know the gamma and the, uh, the z uh, variable, right? So again, to make the EM algorithm to, to be completed, we need to compute these two variables. So this is again today's uh, the, the, uh, lecture. So we have two types of uh, this other uh, value. It is uh, given the observation, so it's actually posterior distribution. And the, the, we also uh, the, try to kind of uh, uh, the compute this uh, value, likelihood value uh, in this uh, lecture. So these are kind of target uh, of today's lecture. Okay. So these are kind of review of previous one. And uh, we will have a more uh, the dive uh, into the algorithm. By the way, pro uh, probably last lecture, you guys may already think that, oh, there are so many equations, right? Uh, this, this one more. <laughs> but this is the most cases. The, this is, uh, how to say, for some of you guys, the worst case. Uh, and uh, later, we don't have so much equations. So uh, this is the most difficult part in terms of math uh, uh, in our lecture, I would say. And again, just to uh, want to give you the motivation. Yes, most cases, you don't have to solve it. Already solved, right? You guys just using a textbook and get the, the result. And then, you know, uh, implement what back other algorithm. That is fine. But uh, if you guys try to do something new, something new research, you actually need to solve like this. So again, the, the, uh, the, I want you guys to not just uh, only developing the technique, but also uh, the, uh, developing a new algorithm. So in this kind, kind of a phase, you need to actually uh, the, the solve this kind of equation. So I will try to provide the exact formulation as much as possible. Okay, uh, let's uh, the move uh, to the forward backward algorithm. So first, uh, let's try to understand the meaning of the gamma and the z. So gamma here is that in some timing, like t, the, uh, the state, uh, HMM state would be some state j. The probability of this uh, the, 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 uh, the, uh, uh, situation it's uh, the, the, uh, actually the, the meaning of the gamma. And the more specifically, I can try to explain it with the torus because it is easy for us to understand what it is. Let's say uh, the, this t times sum will be three. So this is here. And then st is a second state, HMM. So in this case, it's uh, u second other state. Uh, it's our target and so on. And then uh, our, uh, the, uh, this, uh, the, uh, the two, uh, uh, two values actually specify where we are because this, this is T equals three. 
and this is the uh, the second HM state. So uh, the, we are now here, okay. And then the meaning is that the probability of we are here, given the observation. But uh, uh, the, the note that you know uh, it can be various passes, right? For example, using the pen, this can be this path. This can be this path. This can be this path and so on. We don't know which path uh, that, that we are taken. But anyway, this probability is uh, the expected value of all possible this sequence to see uh, that in this point how much it happens. So this is a kind of a, a, a meaning of uh, this uh, the gamma uh, probability. A little, little bit difficult in terms of we consider all possible state sequence. But other than that, it's very kind of simple. The uh, probability of uh, that we are here given uh, we can be any kind of a passage and so on. By the way, in the left to right, uh, the, the, con uh, the constraint, uh, it is very obvious that, uh, of course, this path is not, maybe it, I try to fast erase everything. Okay. So you can change the color. So this path is not counted, right? Because this is the, uh, the uh, doesn't pass this point. So uh, this uh, the probability is actually not considered uh, in this other cases. So uh, the, this is again the meaning of uh, this uh, the gamma t. Okay. And then they the, uh, move to the short of quiz one, uh, please uh, activate it. So short quiz one is, I kind of posted the one sequence. And this one sequence is whether it is uh, the included in this uh, the posterior computation or not. It's the other quiz. Is that clear, other question? Okay. Yeah. Um, there is a sequence written in the theater, right? Yeah. So the question is uh, that this one is uh, the, uh, the included when we computing this letter value or not? Yes. Uh, do you have a left-right constraint? Yes, left-to-right constraint. Yes, exactly. So left-to-right constraint, due to the left-to-right constraint, uh, there are some other uh, passes which is not contributing to other uh, compute this one. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, this is a little bit a uh, vague question. So uh, the, the, it's good to have this kind of interaction. Um, okay, let's for example, uh, the, the using this Using this one as an example and to show you, this one is, you know, first UW1, right? Second UW1, third UW2, fourth UW2, sorry, uh, here, <laughs> and the fifth UW5. So the path would be this. So in these cases, it goes to this red point. So it's included, right? And then the question is the uh, pass in this other uh, uh, piazza, whether this is included or not. It passes the red point or not.
Okay, one more minute. Okay, please close the poll. So the answer is no, because one, 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 two, three. Um, this will go to one, 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 two, three. So it doesn't actually reach to the this letter point. Okay. So uh, this is the meaning of this gamma t. Given the, uh, this point, uh, we can consider all possible passes, but just kind of uh, reaching to this point uh, and passing this point and uh, moving to the final one, and then consider the posterior probability, okay? The next, uh, the same, uh, the, uh, representation interpretation we can provide uh, for this uh, give you the uh, the uh, probability. This is the uh, showing the actually transition uh, from I to J. And uh, let's also uh, make a big example of uh, the T equal to four here. And then the, the in the uh, the it is from uh, the, the transition from UW2 to UW3. So this means that the, we consider this transition. Previously, we considered a point, right? The next, uh, this time, we consider the uh, partial this arc, uh, and then the probability of consider uh, all possible passes that are the goal to this line, that is a kind of a probability of this uh, good I, uh, T minus one. And uh, similar to the uh, previous cases, if we use the uh, left to right constraint, uh, we actually cannot uh, use these passes, right? And then we cannot go to this other passes. So very similar to the previous cases. Uh, the, but previous cases uh, is the point. And in this case is this arc. Okay. So this is a kind of more like a probability of the transition, expected value of the, uh, the, uh, the, the transition in general. Okay, now uh, that we will move to the short quiz two. This is uh, the exactly the same as the short quiz one. Uh, please activate it. <clears throat> So the question is this sequence will corresponding to uh, go to this arc or not.
One more minute. Please uh, close the poll. So this case one, two, two, three, three. So one, two, two, three, three. So actually this uh, the sequence uh, passes uh, this arc, right? But of course it can be this one, you know, this arc. Uh, and so on. So in general, uh, the, it is not only single pass, but we consider all possible passes. And this is the kind of uh, probability uh, the, of uh, the passing this other uh, arc and so on. And the, uh, this uh, value actually can be computed. And I will show you how to do it. So to compute this one, actually we first uh, define the forward probability, this one, and the backward probability, this one. So given we know this, uh, the, the forward and the backward probability, we actually compute uh, this other uh, previous, uh, the, the gamma and the Z value. So this is very complicated, but I will show you how to do it. So miraculously, we can actually uh, compute this. So first, this is just the definition, right? Uh, by the way, I just using the GZ T minus one to T uh, just to uh, the, make the uh, notation simple. Uh, there's nothing changed. Uh, but anyway, uh, this is a kind of definition of GZ uh, T, ST equal one to ST plus one e equal J given the observation. Okay, so first uh, we use the product rule and also uh, the removing the normalizing constant. And then we get to this kind of our uh, the equations. Can everyone follow this one? This is a, a kind of a base, base rule. And then uh, the also uh, removing the normalizing constant. Okay, so this is more like a product rule. Next. Uh, we just kind of de decompose the sequence. So nothing changed, but just changing the notation of O1T plus OT, o o uh, from O1 to OT, OT plus one, from OT plus two to T, just to kind of uh, make the following uh, formulation simple. Next, uh, we using the product rule to uh, the factorize uh, this distribution to three distribution. Now it's getting complicated, but it's a kind of a one of the chain rule, right? We just focus on this one, and then this one, and this one going back to the condition. And then uh, the focus on this one, uh, this one goes to the condition, and this one is uh, the rest of the term. Okay. Uh, that we kind of decompose this distribution to three distribution. And then that uh, we also have a joint distribution of the other uh, state the, from the product rule. But actually, uh, the, this is very difficult to deal with each of the distribution. It's actually impossible. So uh, the, how to deal with that? We use the, the conditional independence assumption. 
Okay, let's check the other uh, uh, data distribution one by one. First, uh, focus on this one. O1t given OT plus one and so on. And it is actually very difficult which one we can add or uh, remove in terms of conditional independence assumption. So uh, in my uh, suggestion, in this case, we should write a graph. We should write a kind of a uh, dependency. For example, the, this one is HMM. HMM is only depending on the other state and the state is kind of dependent on the previous state. So we can actually write the, uh, the, the dependency like this. And then let's check this kind of distribution. And uh, I also kind of mark, for example, uh, the uh, yellow part is the left, left side of the, uh, the, the variable. And the right side, which is condition, is uh, written as a left circle. And then the, the, uh, the, the probability, uh, we try to kind of uh, uh, the, get the probability of this one, right? Question, to compute this probability, is these values change the result of this one? Is that condition uh, the, the changing the result of this one? No, right, you are right. How about this one, ST plus one? No, it's only depending on ST, right? So we can, uh, based on this kind of a graph, we can safely uh, removing the conditions, conditional independence assumption, given left to right HMM assumption, okay? And then that uh, we can actually uh, the simplify this uh, the, the first term. This is, turns out that O1t is depending on st equal i. And I will do the same thing for the rest of the term. Second one, this is also very complicated, you know, a lot of conditions there, right? Similarly, we just writing it as a uh, the graph structure and putting the condition and the, uh, the, the, uh, the probabilistic variable. And the, in this case, these variables will change the result of this one, these future variables. No, you are right. And the same for uh, the, the ST, only depending on this ST plus one. So we can, again, uh, safely uh, the removing the condition. And then we simplify this uh, distribution. The last term, uh, exactly the same. This also looks very complicated. OT plus two to uh, T. Uh, is that depending on ST? No. It's actually ST plus one is already conditioned, observed like a J in these cases. So uh, the, this one doesn't change the result of this one, but this one actually possibly changes the result of ST2, right? Uh, based on the uh, Markov result. And then this also the possibly depending on this one. So this is a kind of indirect uh, the, uh, relationship. But anyway, uh, the, uh, to OT plus one, OT plus two can be changed if this value is changed. So in this cases, ST plus one only kind of exists as a condition. So by doing that, we actually can simplify these three distributions. And then finally, uh, we do the kind of a, a product rule. And then uh, that we actually can decompose this uh, Z probability as a four distribution. And the one is actually alpha, a forward probability, which I will explain it later. Same for this one. 
beta, uh, this uh, will be explained later. But the other is actually for this one, uh, the, if we using the single Gaussian distribution, it is obvious that it can be represented as a single Gaussian distribution. And this one is a state transition. So uh, still we need to uh, compute alpha and beta, but the rest of the part is actually computed by Gaussian and the state transition, if we know this parameter. Uh, very complicated, right? Yeah. <laughs> Hope people can uh, follow. Yes. This one. Yes, this one is more like a, uh, the definition of the Gaussian, uh, uh, definition of this kind of a lecture. We regarding uh, the, the HMM emission probability is single Gaussian. So uh, this is more like a, uh, the, I think I mentioned in the previous lecture that you know, after we kind of you know, factorize each distribution, we providing the actual function distribution, right? And then we have a discussion that whether this is Gaussian or gamma distribution or a multinomial. Do, do, do you remember this discussion? This is that part, but you are very, this is, uh, the question is very good. Actually, it depends on the model, right? Again, in this case, I just simplify the discussion and then saying this one is single Gaussian distribution, but in the COSAM project too, this is actually Gaussian mixture model. And then the, the advanced lecture, uh, we will actually replacing this one to a deep neural network. So anyway, this emission part uh, is one of the design of the model. And then again, in this kind of a, a formulation, we assuming the single Gaussian as an emission distribution. That's why this one is like this. But this one is obvious. This one is state transition. So it should be like a multinomial distribution. Okay. Yeah, very good question because again uh, this can be changed depending on the model setting okay so uh, we still need to compute the alpha and the beta but uh, anyway we with that we can somehow compute so compute uh, this value so we are almost there and the next uh, the uh, question is how to compute the gamma. And I kind of are uh, making the uh, derivation blank because it becomes a homework. <laughs> <laughs> However, please note that this one is way easier than previous one. Although basically using similar uh, derivation, uh, using a product root decomposition, to the sub sequence and the condition independent function. And then finally, we get this kind of uh, probability. Uh, it is uh, the similar to the previous formulation, but uh, don't worry, this is way, similar, way simple, uh, the simpler than the previous one. You know, previous one, it's actually <laughs> based on the four factor, right? So it actually becomes very complicated, but this one is just a two. So, I uh, hope you guys can just enjoy this derivation. Okay, uh, given this, uh, we uh, the, uh, the, actually this is very kind of uh, simple. This uh, the the, uh, the uh, probability, uh, the the uh, gamma probability. As I mentioned, this is just a point, right? Probability of the posterior probability of the, the where we are now in the uh, the uh, previous. So this is actually simply written by the product of the, uh, the forward variable and the backward variable probabilities. So I just want to summarize uh, two equations. Uh, one is the, uh, the GZ, uh, the transition, uh, posterior of the transition probability. This is written by the forward probability, Gaussian distribution, uh, backward probability, and the state transition. This one, 
is the, uh, the posterior probability uh, of the point here. This is uh, the written by the product of the uh, forward probability and the, uh, the backward uh, probability. And then now we move to uh, the, uh, the discussion of how to uh, uh, compute the forward and the backward uh, probabilities. Uh, do you guys have some questions here? Okay, so I will just move to the, uh, the explanation of the forward and the backward probability. And like similar to the, uh, the gamma, uh, the explanation of the gamma, I will first providing the meaning of the uh, forward probability. So forward probability is we are from one to T, not in the other uh, large T, okay. Just uh, some, something middle, not consuming the order data. And then uh, the, the, we are somewhere in the HMM state, right? In this example, for example, uh, we are uh, the consuming the two uh, the, uh, uh, the observations and then state it here. And then probability is uh, just consider this uh, the, the, the uh, position, posterior distribution of this one. But uh, please note that the previous one, gamma t and so on, consider the all kind of sequence, right? This one is not, this one is just a partial uh, the, from here to here, uh, the, from uh, the, this part, uh, because uh, the only observation is this two. And this can be go, uh, the, any of the things, but uh, anyway, the, the, the one important part is that the, Observation is only uh, the up to T. These are different. Okay, so uh, the, the, uh, this other uh, one is actually computed recursively. So first uh, we uh, the compute the other uh, uh, T equal one, time T equal one, and then expanding it to the, uh, the general case. So t equal one cases, it is actually quite simple. We just uh, the, the, uh, introduce the observation one and the uh, state is j. And then uh, this one, we using the product rule here to uh, the factorize this joint distribution. And then we actually can uh, the, uh, the realize this, uh, the, uh, the probability with the initial transition, uh, initial state, and then uh, the, the Gaussian distribution. Again, this one, we use a single Gaussian, uh, the uh, assumption modeling. So now to compute alpha one and the J, there's the, the no other variable. Now we can compute this one, right? Just using the sum value in the uh, transition and the Gaussian term. Uh, we can also compute some value, okay. Next, we will uh, extend it to the uh, general cases. And uh, to uh, the consider the general cases, again, we starting from the definition uh, of the, uh, the alpha value. And the first part, we actually introduce uh, some rule to uh, the introduce the uh, ST minus one equal I, okay. From here to here, we just using a sample. And uh, with this kind of a three joint distribution, we could actually uh, compute the, uh, the factorize this kind of distribution efficiently. By using the sequence decomposition, we actually having this kind of uh, the related as a, this uh, the, uh, the two, uh, the variable and the one subsequence. And then product rule to factorize. And we using the, uh, the conditional independence assumption. I skip the kind of a conditional independence assumption for each of the kind of a derivation. But if we are not very sure, like I said before in the, uh, the, the graph, please make a graph 
and then please write a kind of variable and a condition. And then you can see which condition you can safely eliminate. And the later that we actually using the distributed property to only getting this uh, variable. And then further are uh, using the product rule to finally get this kind of a distribution, uh, this uh, the derivation. So uh, the, this uh, the forward probability is actually written as a recursive form here, t minus one i, right? And then having a state transition probability. And uh, the last of the term is Gaussian distribution. Again, it can be Gaussian mixture or deep neural network uh, the, the values depending on our model. But in our cases, we use a single Gaussian distribution. So by using uh, this kind of a, a formulation, we can actually decompose it. And now, you know, uh, this becomes uh, the incremental equation. So, and we know the first value. So we actually compute it uh, the recursively. So uh, first we have uh, this one, right? We compute this value for each J. And then uh, the, the uh, the, by using the uh, this uh, equation, to we go to the next step of t, uh, and we can recursively uh, going this computation from one to large t. So this is the four other uh, algorithm. So uh, this one is uh, kind of computing like that. First, we compute the uh, initial. Uh, the, the uh, value at t equal one, uh, t equal one, and the the, uh, the state all states. In these cases, uh, first compute this point, this point, and then this point. Okay. Now uh, the, the, we move to the for loop, but if we know all these three values, we can actually compute the next one by uh, the using the previously uh, the computed values times state transition, and then uh, the take the summation. And then also uh, the, the multiply the, uh, the likelihood of uh, the Gaussian distribution here. Uh, by doing that, uh, the, uh, we can compute the alpha probability of this point. We can also compute at this point and this point. Okay, so as you can see that this computation is linear across the time, right? So uh, the, just want to emphasize that through this alpha probabilities, the computation is linear over the time, not the sequence. So we, need to compute the various values, right? We need to compute the gamma, we need to compute the, uh, the GZ, and we try to avoid the summation over the sequence, right? And then the, the, to compute the gamma and the GZ, we need to uh, the, the compute forward probability, but fortunately forward probability is computed without using the sequence summation. So we can actually compute uh, these uh, values efficiently. So this uh, is the forward algorithm. By the way, this forward backward algorithm is also appeared in the CTC and RN transducer. So uh, the derivation is, by, by the way, very simple <laughs> compared with the other uh, the HMM cases. But uh, the basically the, the same uh, the algorithm is used. So please uh, the, the understand this forward, uh, forward algorithm. And I have actually two remarks about it. So first, in the left to right constraint, for example, this uh, arc and this arc doesn't exist, right? So this is actually zero probability. So you can, when you uh, compute the your kind of a four other algorithm, uh, you can actually treat uh, this part to be zero, okay? Uh, and the actually in the our homework, 
this uh, state transition is already embedded, right, Shanghai. So this is actually uh, became the disk of the only kind of a, a non-zero arc. So you guys may not explicitly care about it, but in general, if you try to implement other uh, uh, the forward probability, uh, the, you guys actually have to care about this constraint. Okay. And another remark uh, is that uh, this one, please, please compute it in log domain. Okay. Uh, do not compute in the uh, linear domain. It's actually can easily uh, the, uh, 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 the go to the, uh, the, uh, the overflow or underflow. So depending on your kind of value. So this is another one of the very important tips. So please compute everything in the log domain, okay? And then we actually need a log sum exponential operation to handle uh, this uh, the, the, uh, log domain operation. Uh, and uh, the, please uh, the make sure to use the log sum exponential operation and do not compute it in the, this uh, the, the linear domain. Always try to compute everything in the log domain. Otherwise, you do not get a, a result. Especially Gaussian is very peaky and a very high value. That, uh, it goes to the very high value. So this, uh, the, 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 the computation easily goes to the, the, the infinity or completely zero. Uh, if we uh, co do not compute to the, uh, the log domain. So please be careful about that. Okay, so this is the, uh, the alpha probability, which you know, we will use for computing the GUZI and the uh, uh, gamma uh, the, uh, the probabilities. However, in addition to this kind of uh, the, uh, the computation, this forward algorithm itself is used to actually compute the likelihood. As I mentioned in my beginning of the slide, this computation is very difficult because we have a summation over the sequence. So straightforward uh, the computation of this one is actually impossible. However, by using the forward equation, uh, we can actually uh, the compute uh, this other uh, value uh, without uh, the using the summation over the sequence. So let me uh, the prove that. So first, uh, the, we kind of computing the forward probability until the end of the time frame. Gravity. And then I just kind of uh, providing the definition of the alpha t in the last time step. This is written like that, right? So to compute actually likelihood, if we summarize, uh, if we uh, the, the perform the summation, over this variable, which is just you know computing for from one to j, right? We can actually compute uh, this likelihood. So the likelihood can also be computed efficiently uh, by using the uh, forward uh, algorithm. And since it comes from the forward uh, the algorithm, so the complexity is again linear uh, the, the over the, that time. So it's not sequence. So by doing that, we can uh, the efficiently compute the likelihood value. Okay. Is there any question about this part? Okay. Yeah, by the way, why, you know, we can avoid this, uh, the summation over the sequence is internally in this whole other algorithm, uh, the computation, we actually having a lot of distributed property inside so that we can actually avoid the, the, uh, the summation over the sequence. Okay, so uh, the next is the backward probability. Uh, this is also uh, similar to the previous 
uh, the, the uh, alpha, uh, the forward probability, it's actually also the, the uh, probability of the point of the, uh, the, the, uh, the t plus one to t, and then the, the state is here, okay? So this is also partial sequence and it comes from the future. So that's why people call it backward, okay? And the backward probability uh, is also uh, the, the, uh, the formulated, uh, derived uh, by using the simple equation. And uh, this is also <laughs> the format. Yeah, some people already <laughs> laughing, so they may expect that, yes. So this one is also uh, the computed from the, uh, the same derivation uh, with the forward. Uh, the, the algorithm and so on. And uh, given that we can act again uh, the making a recursive equation from beta t to beta t plus one, and then did the a likelihood and the state transition, very similar to the previous uh, one. But uh, the index is slightly shifted. So please uh, the, the, uh, the make sure that alpha, uh, the, the uh, forward algorithm and the backward algorithm is slightly different. Okay. And by using the backward algorithm, we can again making a recursion and getting the, uh, the, uh, the beta uh, probability for the all the points. So I don't uh, the, uh, explain the detail about the, uh, the, the backward algorithm because it, again, it is very similar to the, uh, the forward algorithm. But I just want to mention that this is also computationally uh, linear uh, over the time. So this is uh, efficiently uh, computed without using the uh, summation over the sequence. Okay, so uh, the, with this, after you kind of finish the forward algorithm and the backward algorithm, we now know all the kind of a variable of the alpha ti and the uh, beta ti. So we can actually compute the z and the gamma uh, based on this uh, the forward and the backward algorithm. So please note that the forward algorithm itself cannot provide the, the, the gamma or uh, the, the z. By combining the, uh, the forward and the backward algorithm, you can finally get this uh, the Z T and the other uh, uh, gamma T. Okay. So these are kind of are called the forward backward algorithm. Uh, any question? Okay, so I will uh, the move to the last part, which is a bomb wealth algorithm. This is more like a summary uh, of uh, given the forward and the backward algorithm, how to uh, estimate the uh, HMM uh, Gaussian parameters. So as I mentioned, uh, this uh, the, the, uh, M step is a way to estimate the uh, parameters. And this is comes from the, uh, uh, the, the gamma, z, and observation, and so on. So if we uh, the finish the, all the kind of uh, uh, the, uh, forward algorithm and uh, uh, the backward algorithm, we can actually compute uh, this uh, the, the, the parameter and then update it. So people are actually use, uh, the, using sufficient statistics representation, which are the, the, are the performing the summation over the, uh, the T uh, for the, uh, all the parameter in advance. And then uh, the using the, uh, the uh, uh, update equation, this is more efficient. Uh, so, uh, the, but the, the, we can actually easily compute it uh, the, if we uh, the anyway know the gamma and the theta and so on. But people actually using the sufficient statistics here uh, instead of the, uh, the uh, storing this kind of a value for entire data. 
this is more efficient. And uh, this is the final uh, estimation of the HM parameters. So first, we have an observation and we have a model, right? But a very important part is that this is the iterative method. We has first need to provide the initialization of these parameters. Okay. If we have some initialization, we can actually compute the many of the value, right? A state transition and the Gaussian value and so on. So that the, the, uh, we can actually perform the forward computation, forward algorithm. First, we do the forward algorithm to scan all the data based on the previously estimated parameters. And do the same things for the backward algorithm. Okay. And then store all kinds of information uh, of the alpha and the beta. And given this alpha and the beta, we can compute uh, gamma and GZT, again, by kind of scanning uh, the, the older kind of uh, other data, uh, all the kind of information of the alpha, beta, and then the, the, uh, the sometimes computing likelihood and so on. And then the, the, we uh, the accumulate these statistics that I mentioned before, which we call it sufficient statistics. And then now we use uh, the updating the HM parameters. After we update the HM parameter, we do the same things again. We have a better defined uh, the, the mean and the variable for the Gaussian distribution and the state transition uh, and so on. And then uh, we do the same uh, process again. And then uh, the finally, uh, if for example, uh, it depends on the kind of uh, thresholding. Some people may using, for example, the, the 10 iterations or some people checking the likelihood and so on. Uh, and then the, we actually stop the iteration and then uh, the, the, uh, the providing these parameters as a final result. So uh, the, by using the, uh, this algorithm uh, to compute the uh, hidden Markov model parameters, we don't use any sequence summation and compute this one efficiently. So this is the bam uh, algorithm. So bam algorithm is this kind of entire algorithm of estimating the HM parameters and who are the backward algorithm are inside in the bam algorithm. Okay, so there are several other uh, summary remarks. First, uh, the all computations are now tractable. There is no sequence summation. So uh, this is uh, the very beautiful. Uh, by the way, uh, this is the one of the only solution we have. And uh, even we extended it to the, for example, different distribution than Gaussian or making the HMM to be more, more little bit nonlinear function we actually cannot find the tractable solution. And this is the iterative computation. So please remember that. So this means that the initialization is also very important. And the, uh, this uh, the, the algorithm actually doesn't have so many hyperparameters. Now in the deep neural network era, everyone is you know, fighting with the neural network engineering, right? learning rate, uh, batch size, uh, dropout, uh, initialization is also included, uh, the whatever, right? These are more like a hyperparameters that we have to fight. But the, the EM algorithm, basically, uh, I would say that there are two hyperparameters. One is initialization. This is important. And the other is when we stop the iteration. But this is actually not so difficult. Just, you know, uh, the, the, if we check the kind of likelihood and if it, it is converted, we can just stop it. So in our uh, the homework, probably five to 10 iterations are enough to get the kind of uh, the converted variable and so on. 
So anyway, the other uh, initialization is uh, the, the one of the important part. And the, the other part is, as I mentioned in the uh, beginning of the EM algorithm introduction, likelihood is, should be always increased, should not decrease. So uh, the, if you guys have some kind of issues in your implementation and the likelihood is decreased, probably instead of asking ours, please check your kind of uh, the code because there should be some bug. Likelihood is already increased, but still has some kind of strange behavior. Uh, it's worse to ask us. There's something wrong, but uh, it can be uh, uh, not in the bug, but probably due to some other uh, factors and so on. So this is uh, kind of uh, easier than the bug propagation in terms of uh, debugging and so on. So this is the kind of uh, uh, the summary of the, uh, the HMM above merge algorithm. And the rest of the time, I will ask Shankai to uh, uh, explain about uh, the coding assignment to remark again. But before that, do you have some questions? 